What's up everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and in this episode of Coding with the Force, I'm going to show you how to set up a Salesforce dev org for free. Alright everybody, welcome back to this Apex Masterclass tutorial series. Today, we are going to figure out how to set up our own free Salesforce developer org so that we can start learning how to be developers, start learning the admin side of things, and maybe even build out your own, you know, project to show whoever you want to show what Salesforce is and, you know, what you can maybe do in it. But before we get into that, make sure if you enjoy this video to actually like it, because when you do, it helps this video get out to more people just like you who want to learn about this stuff for free. So if you enjoy it, like it, and that way everybody else can benefit from it too. Now let's get back to the video. In all of my tutorials, my classes, my whatever else, you'll see me working in Salesforce, right? But if you've never done Trailhead or you've never uh, worked in Salesforce much, you might not have any idea, you know, how do I get one of these orgs to actually do this work in, right? Lots of you might, many more of you might not. Thankfully, it's pretty easy to get set up, uh, you know, set up your own free Salesforce developer edition org. Um, and all you have to do is go to developer.salesforce.com slash sign up and you'll put in your information here and sign up. Now I'm going to do this for you just so you can see uh, how quick and easy it is. One thing I will just point out when you are using these free orgs is in Salesforce as you'll find out in this tutorial series and as you'll find out as you, you know, do more and more and more in Salesforce is since you live in this cloud, this multi-tenant architecture, as they call it, there are limits imposed upon your orgs. The amount of data you can store in it, the amount of uh, queries you can do in it uh, or in, in one single context, the amount of API calls that you can have come into it or go out from it. And in your developer edition org, those are very, very, very low. Um, in comparison to regular, um, you know, organizations, uh, Salesforce organizations or Salesforce instances, those numbers in a dev org are low. So don't get too crazy with it. There are ways I've found to, you know, bypass those um, uh, limits with uh, big objects and things along those lines. But <clears throat> I wouldn't necessarily suggest any of them. And uh, Salesforce might get cranky at me if I reveal too many of them. Um, so anyway, let's see. My username, uh, coding with the force at gmail.com dot, um, what, Apex Masterclass, because why not? That's what we're doing right now. So you're going to choose this username. One thing that's important about this username is if you have ever created a Salesforce org or you've been placed in a Salesforce org and you've used your email as your username in one of those orgs literally anywhere, you can't reuse it. You have to uh, put something new on the end of it or whatever else. Salesforce only allows uh, unique usernames across literally every instance that it has ever created. So you have to be a little bit careful there. Your username does have to be unique across all of Salesforce, not just in your org. All right, so we're gonna hit sign me up and it's gonna say beep, 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 boop processing. And I am going to open up my coding with the force email here. Hopefully we'll see uh, coding with the force. Where are you? Mm -hmm -hmm. I still don't have the email. Every once in a while, it'll take a couple minutes for that email to come in. And uh, I might just cut it here if it doesn't show up soon and then come back to it once the email actually shows up. All right, so it took about four minutes to get this email. Uh, I'll bring it over here now. It takes a little while for it to you know, generate your actual org right, your Salesforce org, which is what it's referred to, 
as um, because you know they actually partition space for you and they set up a whole environment for you. So it takes a little bit for their you know processes to generate that in the background. And then you will get this uh, welcome to Salesforce verify your account email as you see here. And you'll just click verify my account. And it's gonna ask me to set up a password. Uh, and I'm just gonna put in something. And what city was I born? Taco Bell Town. Yeah. I, I, I like Taco Bell far too much. All right, and there you go. And now you have your very own Salesforce org. So nice, quick, easy, and um, didn't cost you a thing. And if you are interested, I'm going to put this in the uh, notes uh, for the video. But there are a whole, uh, there's a whole list of, um, you know, allocation, the limits that I was talking about earlier. I'll put this um, in the notes for this video so that you can actually go check this out if you are interested in what the different editions, uh, uh, you know, limits are, and more specifically the developer edition, which actually gives you quite a bit considering it's completely free. All right, guys, that is it for this episode. I hope that you will continue to follow along with this Apex Masterclass series because I promise there's a lot of good stuff to come, and by the end of it, you will be a very capable Apex developer for the Salesforce platform. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.